Hopefully you're still with us out there as we begin to talk about computer networks. Now we're going to break this down into two separate videos. The reason why we're going to break this down into two separate videos is there's quite a lot of information to cover. Keeping in mind that we're really not delving into networking as far as the level that you would go if you were to take a networking course. But we're going to cover the basics that you're probably going to run into in the workplace or if you set up your own network. So we're going to keep it kind of high level thinking here. We're not going to go too far in depth in any of this um, as, far as, as far as networking geek goes. We can classify networks on based by three different concepts. We can classify networks based off of topology, what they look like. We can base them off of geography, where they're located at. And we can base them off of resources. In other words, how do they share information? So let's first take a look at the topology. Topology of a network describes the physical layout of the network. Where are the computers located at? Where is central devices located at? How is the wiring laid out? We can also look at topology as far as logical topology. What I mean by that is how does it logically work? How are signals sent? What is the command underneath it? What's the operation behind it? What, what kind of rules does it follow? So physical topology, like I just said, is the way the network is physically laid out. Location of the nodes, computers, networking devices, printers, etc. While the logical topology is how the network communicates, sends, receives, and interprets data. Under physical topology, we have four big ones that we need to be aware of. We have the bus, the ring, the star, and a hybrid. While logically, we break it down into either a bus or a ring. The bus topology is one of the older topologies out there. In fact, when computer networks were first created, they most likely worked under a bus topology. What we're talking about here is a single cable that runs through the building, that runs through the office areas, and all devices are connected off of that one single cable. That one single cable was known as either the backbone, the bus cable, or the trunk. You're probably not going to run into a bus topology in your typical environment, in typical work environment. This is uh, There's a lot of things that are wrong with it. There's some good stuff, like it's cheap, but there's a lot of stuff wrong with it. For example, the network slows down the more computers you have connected. The bus logical topology, however, is the most common type of topology that you're going to run into. What this is, is that everybody sends signals along the network um, depending on when they want to send a signal. So what occurs here is they pick up a phone, they listen for a dial tone, and they send a signal. You have things called collisions, which can end signals. But again, this is delving into more advanced networking stuff, which really we don't need to go into. The next type of topology is the ring topology. And as you can see by the picture, it is attached to a ring. There's no beginning, there's no end. It's a circular ring. And we can have a single ring or dual ring. Dual ring adds to fault tolerance. In other words, it's able to withstand something going down and the network is still up. We have ring logical topologies. This is uh, not as commonly used. Basically what happens here is a computer will wait for what we call a token to be able to send information. It waits its turn until it's told to send information. So that would be the ring logical topology. Now if you're in more the advanced networking area and you're more of a geek, Again, we are skimming the surface of this. I have an entire series I'm developing on Network Plus. So if you really want to geek out, go check out that. So we're just trying to cover some basics on networking here. The star topology is your most common uh, topology that you're going to run into, your most common physical topology. What happens here is you have a wiring closet somewhere, a wiring cabinet somewhere, where you have your central devices. And from those central devices, they put out cables all through the building to your individual computer. There's nobody else attached to your cable but your device. And this is what you find, again, in most of your office settings, most of your corporate settings. All computers are attached to a central device. There are definitely some good things about this. For example, scalability. You can put a computer on the network or take a computer off the network. Everybody's still on. Nobody's getting knocked off. If you have a failure along the network, it's fairly easy to troubleshoot where it's located at. 
One of the downsides is cost because you do have to have run wire from every device back to a central location. Then we have a mesh topology. Mesh is incredibly fault tolerant. This has connections from every computer to every other device. The big advantage to this one obviously is that it's almost impossible to take down this kind of a network because there's so many different pathways that a computer can go to. The bad part is, is that it's incredibly complex to set up. You have tons of wiring. And again, every device is connected to every other device. So you can imagine how that works. The next video, we're going to continue our look at network topology. We're going to take a look at geography the divisions, uh, how we define things by geography, as well as how we divide things by resources. <laughs>